three, two, one. Welcome to Big Blue Breakdown. Your host, as always, Matthew Lau, joined with Buck Nasty. How you been, man? There's been a guest in the show. We haven't got to do this in a while. Mike's been sick. Uh, We have some technical difficulties on our end. Busy time in our life, but we're here. Mike's with us. Tournament time. Tell us about it, man. Man, I am happy to be back. Happy to be back. I just got my voice back on Wednesday. You guys are still here. It's a little, or I'm sorry, on Tuesday. It's still a little crackling. Uh, but man, I'm excited. I got to see a state championship on Saturday, and hopefully, we get to see a UK championship here in a few weeks as well. Man, it's 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 it's, it's going to be a great time. You're sounding gravelly there, my friend. Yes, it is. Mike here, playing injured, playing through the pain. Speaking of playing injured, TJ Washington in a boot. Now he's you know, up in the air. He's day to day. Mike, what's your takeaway from? It? We'll, 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 just, we'll let's dissect this into several different groups. So I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. But what's your takeaway on the injury first? Well, let me just start star star right there. PJ was in a boot. I was on the Twitter machine on PJ's uh, t- Twitter page, and he showed a picture of of him walking in the airport with no boot or or no cast. So he was in the boot, not anymore. Um, the takeaway. From the injury, I, I don't. I, I don't even know if we know what the injury was. Like I've heard anywhere from a from a fractured foot to a sprained ankle to a torn like a torn tendon off of the pinky bone. Uh, so like I I don't know what the injury is, but if he's walking without a boot and he and he is wanting to play, uh, we definitely need him to play. To win a championship and 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 beat a very good Houston team, uh, but PJ is not going to play unless he knows he is not going to further injure his ankle because he has such a he has such a um, high ceiling going into the NBA draft and the combine and that kind of thing. And unfortunately, guys, a championship is not on PJ's list. His like his list is just getting through this season and and hopefully, and hopefully bringing a, bringing a championship, but ultimately he's he he's looking forward to the combine to the to the draft and to June or July uh, when he gets to join that G League team or that or the summer league team and prove himself. So he is only going to play if if we know that he is either one hundred percent. Or if he cannot further injure that foot. So let me kind of differ a little bit on that. And, and look, I mean, this is all speculation at this point. I don't think, just kind of from looking around and just kind of taking in what I've known of history and watching previous drafts and all this, first off, I think PJ, I think winning a title is something that's on his list. Now, when he came back, it may have been improving his draft stock, but I, I think I think PJ took it really bad that even though he was a key factor into that Kansas State game, he was a big effect in, in us losing. I mean, he shot eight for twenty from free throw line. I think we lost by six. Uh, that's twelve points left there on that alone. Right. So I think he he kind of blames himself a little bit for that. I think he's hungry to get back into March because no matter what you come back to college for, it's for March. Like if you ever come back to play college basketball. The season can be a little boring, a little mundane, a little blah. But the March Madness is just the greatest time for a college athlete. So I, I think that's something he definitely wants to be a part of. His draft stock, and, and, I, and I don't want to get uh, sidetracked on this, because I think he knows, and I think we're going to start to see, he's, his draft stock is what it is. I mean, he's a six foot eleven guy. Yes, the fact that he can shoot now is, is helping his stock a little bit. But he's a six foot eleven guy. Still got a lot of growing to do. The NBA will do with what the NBA will do. I think you're going to see the hype on him settle down, no matter if he plays and wins a national title or not. I think once they start combining and going through workouts and scoping, he's going to find that no matter if he would have left last year, comes back this year, or even comes back next year, he's going somewhere 18 to 30. But, like, I just think that's going to be what's going to happen. But um, either way, he has to be healthy. I mean, like if he's not healthy, <laughs> they aren't going to touch him. Look, even in the, but in from the my understanding round. of the injury, from everything I've seen of it and, and just of the consensus around here, is that he really can't injure it anymore. It's just a world of pain, which leads me to my rant that's not a rant. I don't want to get off on a rant, but it's kind of 
fan, let's pump the brakes here. Why are we holding this dude to such absurd standards when we wouldn't do that to ourselves? Because a lot of things, well, well, I didn't see him get injured. Uh, there was rumors that he kicked something or that he was partying or he was dancing. Well, I didn't see him get injured in a game. Okay, Mike, you're, you're an athlete. Sometimes you get a little stinger, doesn't mean much. But when you go home, it starts to swell, starts to puff up. You're like, oh, crap, you know, I hurt this. Exactly. That's exactly how I hurt, hurt my shoulder. Like I ran into yeah. the wall. And I'm like, oh, like that felt weird. And then I get home and I have a big old ball at the bottom of bottom of my elbow. So I mean, once the once the adrenaline of the game it comes down and your endorphins or whatever's going on like in your brain, they calm down. You're like, oh, that hurts. Like, yeah. come on, guys, like, well, because don't he said, freak out about endorphins, that. Endorphins, the the adrenaline, it makes miniature pain feel like it makes major pain feel like minimal pain right. because. You know, playing sports, you stub your toe, break, you know, break, uh, twist your ankle, and you're like, oh, but I'm ready to go. So I think what he did, and then they're like, well, why did Kentucky lie from this? Well, I don't think they lied. Like, they, they did some preventive. Yeah. Like, yeah. you, like, is it lying, you know, opening day baseball today? Is it lying when a pitcher's on the sideline who just pitched the whole game and he's got ice on his shoulder? No, it's just preventive maintenance. This is what you do when you play sports. Right. When, when uh, Tom Brady goes home and he sits in his million dollar ice tub, is <laughs> oh, is he had an injury? No, he's just so there was a little pain. He put a boot on. There was nothing to report. Cameras just caught it. Oh well, well then well, Cal keeps lying to us. Cal said he thought he could play the, the the game and then he didn't. And then Cal said he might go play the next one and then he didn't. Well, Mike, how many times it happens to us all? How many times do we go to bed on, at a night with a little bit of a scratchy throat, a little bit of a common cold, and you're like? You know, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. And then you wake up in the morning and you feel like death. The cold itself is not going to get any worse, but you just don't feel good. Yeah. So you're like, oh, well, last night I thought I was going to be able to go to work today. Today I'm not. I think that's what happened. He he, he injured it. I think he, he did something to it during the game. But it's the last two minutes of a big game versus a big rival. The adrenaline's pumping. SEC tournament. Tennessee. The lead going away. I mean, it makes perfect sense because he missed that one-foot shot twice. Right. That makes sense if, if if you can't jump as good as you could. Yeah. I mean, so then he goes. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, and if you want to flash back to Reed Travis's knee, that like like that like that like that little knee twist that he had didn't look that bad, but he was out for yeah. what three weeks. So I mean, yeah, and, come on. So what? So what you saw is, and I imagine he was like, man, that kind of stung. We lost. I hate that we lost. You know, Mike, you've lost games. We've all lost games. Injuries feel a little worse. When you're losing a game and you're playing football, a tackle hurts a little worse than yep. when you're winning. You know, so he, the end, the pain quite set in. The medical doctor said, hey, boot it up. Not a problem. The boot wasn't working. I imagine he was still in pain. He goes to Wisconsin. Cause this is the part, too, that I think fans have to realize. Him going to the doctor – him getting a cast isn't the same, Mike, as me and you getting a cast. PJ Washington didn't have to go to his family doctor, pay the insurance, pay the co fee, <laughs> fill out a bunch of insurance forms, get a cast put on, take the doctor note to Coach Cal and say, sorry, Doc, or sorry, Coach, Doc, because I can't play. Right. No, they flew this man to Wisconsin to see a specialist. So the specialist said, well, to help a little better, we put a cast on it. Mind you, when it comes to athletic departments and casts, that's just a step up from putting tape on. They can put casts on and take them off within a matter of minutes. Yeah. I mean, it's not, and it's not like PJ has to pay the medical bills. So he's like, oh, I don't want to put that. No, it's all that's taken care of. So the cast was no big deal. He thought it would feel better. And let's be honest. Everybody said, oh, if we lose to Wolford, it's going to be because no PJ. No, Mike. If we lost to Wolford, it wasn't going to be because of PJ. It was, because it was going to be because of shots. <laughs> yeah. yeah or, or shots wasn't falling. And I'll be honest with you. Every day we lost, we had PJ. And I'm not saying that's a negative about PJ. I'm just saying it shows you, even with PJ, if we come up short, we can lose. Yeah, every so team's beatable. It, it was good to see, as ugly as we look at times, even against Abilene Christian and definitely against Warford, it was nice to see those guys have to fend for themselves. It was it was nice to see, even though it's frustrating and nerve-wracking, and I'm glad we won, and I'm sure this narrative would be completely different had we lost, it was nice to see that Tyler Hero and Keldon Johnson and Ashton Hagens couldn't be bailed off by dumping it down and saying, oh, you know, Tyler Hero. So that's, that was one thing that we saw. The guards were able to play so far out because they didn't dump it off to PJ. 
So when they don't dump it off to PJ and don't draw the double team, then Tyler Hero never gets that breathing room. Right. Ashton Hagen's never gets that breathing room. So then when that happens, you have to figure out a way to shoot again. We have to you you have to work your way open. So that might be because let's be honest. PJ may not have been hurt the entire Tennessee game, but we were without PJ quite a bit in the first half due to foul. So just to, he could, the man could be a thousand percent healthy. The man could be and you can turn injuries off like this is Madden. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have to go stretches without somebody. Right. So, like that's that's my take. I was glad to see, I was glad to see these guys kind of step up, and it was very frustrating and very nerve wracking. And we had to deal with the media talk about all oh, this team's not very good without PJ. But now I think if we can get PJ, we're, we're moving in the right direction. And I think it's going to help some of our guards who now are starting to get some games under their belt. Also, speaking Mike. of speaking of guards getting games underneath their belt, it was kind of refreshing to see Jamal P- 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 Baker, Baker out there. And uh, I thought it'd be Mike. Yeah, uh, me, me, like I've kind of been hard on him, like just like just like all year. I'm like, hey man, like. You are a, like you you are a recruit to Kentucky. Like you play four or five minutes a game, and you kind of just like f- fall back in the mix. Like 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 I like I want to see something. I saw a couple steals. I call I saw a couple missed shots. Like I was just happy to see him get involved in the game. And I want to say he played about fourteen minutes in that first game. He, he did. Play, uh, yeah, he's fourteen. I think it was seventeen, maybe the second. Yeah. So and the thing the thing that that does. Is it gives Cal more flexibility, and it gives him Let's confidence. Let's say we don't, right? Absolutely. Let's say we don't get PJ back, right? But people forget most our guards aren't like everyone else's guards. Tyler Hero six five, Kelder Johnson what six seven, maybe six eight on a good day with some good shoes on. Right. Baker six five, six six, something along those lines. Uh, even Hagens and Quickly that's six four. They just look small compared to everybody else. When you have guards like that. Everybody thinks when P.J. goes out, oh, we have to rely on Nick Richards or, oh, we have to rely on E.J. Montgomery. Not necessarily. You move Keldon no, Johnson down, down to that four, and you can bring in it, a quickly now or a Baker. Yes. You know, yeah. Or Working if, if, if we play or, or watch in Oregon, let's just say, for example, Oregon's a really hot team. Let's say we somehow face them in the final four. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be 100% against when you wanted to because – Oregon likes to slow it down. You make Oregon run, you're going to beat them by 30. Yeah. I don't, don't, I would love to see if, if our guys are playing right. Imagine this, Mike. Hagan's at the one, quickly at the two, he, Baker at the three, Hero at the four, Kelvin at the five. Now that sounds absurd. <laughs> it but sounds absurd, but it, it, could, it could very well happen. Well, yeah. When you're playing an undersized Oregon team that likes to play small and slow, well, we can play small and fast, and now you're done. Because good luck having your center. Keep up with Kelvin. Well, even Good though, like, your e- even then, I believe the Oregon center is only 6'9", 6'8", 6'9". Yeah. And if Keldon Johnson's 6'8", you know, 6'7", 6'8", he is just as but big better. as you are, but he's quicker, yeah. he's faster, he has an outside shot, and he and can then, beat, you off the, beat, beat you off the drive. Keldon Johnson would have yeah. a huge game. Oh, yeah. And, and Keldon loves to slip out of the five. Like, oh, that's great. Or, or, and then you have, like, you can just switch it up. Then you have Hagen, who's a point guard, post up against their point guard, who's six foot one, six foot five, ten. Now, now we got the post game rolling for right. Ashton Hagen. So then now you're big because Oregon's not a big team. And, and like, look, this the only way to play Oregon be in the final four. So we're getting ahead of ourselves. But I'm just thinking this is a possibility Cal has because NK tournament's about matchups. So now what you have. If you go that, you have that. You have a six-nine center chasing around a really fast, really quick Keldon Johnson. He's tired. Now who do you bring in? A six-eight, six-nine monster of a man, Reed Travis. You're tired, dude. Oh. <laughs> you probably racked up three fouls trying to stop Keldon Johnson alone. Now I got to stop this guy. And then when once that game's put away, you put in Nick Richards. Who yeah, he's clumsy. But you're six foot nine. He's seven foot tall, and I, I, I'm exhausted. I got four fouls. I have to try to out jump him. And no, I'm and, and like, let, let, let's just say by some crazy aspect, this thing happens. And let's say there that the Oregon center, I don't know his name, but like any means, I haven't done any scouting on Oregon at all. Let's just say he does happen to hold Keldon Johnson for like a for like a you know ten fifteen minute span. You know he he doesn't have any fouls. And he's 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 feeling pretty 
pretty energized. You can still bring in Reed Travis and just wear him out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and then yeah, the second half the is way. like yeah. it's like it is game over. You know. Yeah. So, but let's let's talk more. Like, I would love to see that. <laughs> Look, we talked about this on our on our pre tournament show. If you guaranteed me Kentucky was going to win the title, yes, give me Wolford, give me number three Houston, give me the number one big bad in the division in the little bracket in North Carolina, give me that rematch versus Tennessee, and give me Duke in the national title. If you can guarantee me that. But if you can't, which you can't because it's the tournament and we're not psychic, <laughs> give me an easy route. Like, I don't want to be that guy to give me that. Give me – it's getting a little more restricted. But I guess uh, give me Auburn. Give me a attempt at Oregon in the Final Four. And give me, like, an LSU in the National Championship. Like, like I want I want that. I don't I, – since I don't – since the unknown so scary, I don't want the unknown. Honestly, I don't want to play opponent. any – I don't want to play any SEC teams. Well, the only reason I say LSU – is because championship game, they don't have their head coach. He definitely wouldn't be back for that. Cal can out Cal can out coach whoever that intern guy is, circles around him. Yeah, and but confidence our guys is there. remember but, but our guys remember how we got cheated. True. Like we should have won that game. True. We had an eight point lead. And if you want to be that guy, I don't be the guy who blames it on refs, but you got cheated. Like you got <laughs> cheated, let's be honest. So um but let's talk about the opponent we know we have, Houston. Real quick, I don't, we don't want to. I don't want to spend any more time on the the PJ Washington talk. So I'm going to give you, just give me a quick answer, and then give me your thoughts. And we're going to assume PJ's play. So first off, if PJ doesn't play, can we beat Houston? Uh, yeah, um, I've seen Houston play a- against uh, UC- against UCF, and then they lost against um, I believe it was Cincinnati. They lost Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and, and an the American Amer- Conference. Yeah, and they are a very very beatable team if you. Use your size to your advantage. If you use your strength to your advantage, yes, they are a very, very quick and very athletic team. But if we just throw the ball down into the post and wear them out, and then yeah, and then do an inside outside game, I don't care if PJ is in there or not. We just have to have the post play to be to be effective, to be effective <laughs> like like enough to kind of shrink the court. So we can kick mm-hmm. it back out to to a hero. He can hit a couple couple big shots from 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 the outside. Hagens, Johnson, so, like like like, like etc. The key the key right. to this game on Friday night is inside out, hundred uh, percent. Great point, and and this is the radio version of a lot. You just set me up a perfect Nick Richards top of the key lob because that's that was gonna be my great point. The reason Cal doesn't really get upset too often in the NCAA tournament and I, and I mean by, by bad teams I mean we don't win every year and we lose with some really good teams but the reason you don't see us losing in the first weekend is because Cal runs the offense that is equivalent to a run game in football that Cal doesn't shoot a lot of threes this is, they said you know he said all year this is one of the best shooting teams he has I believe it even then we're one of the least shooting three-pointing teams in the country yeah. Cal plays get to the rim get to the rim easy baskets fouls cut off that's equivalent to a strong running game. You know, the reason you don't see Alabama getting upset a lot is because nine times out of ten, they just, like, hand it off to the biggest back. Good luck stopping him for 50 minutes. Right. So uh, so that's what Cal likes to do. The interesting thing about that, that's what Houston likes to do. So Houston can beat us. Let's let let's, let's, let's that be. Houston is a good team, a three-loss team, that absolutely can beat us. But if we bring our A game, Mike, Houston's just – that it's so funny that our logos look thinking identical, and everybody's using that Spider Man meme where they're looking at each other because our, our logos is a different color, and then just a little indention for the K where they have the H. Right. The block and everything else is identical. It's ironic because that's how our team plays. We have a quick point guard, likes to get to the basket, play strong defense. They do too. Ours is just big. They have a shooting guard that likes to score all their points. He can shoot. He's going to jack them up from three-pointer. He's going to try to get to the basket. He's going to be their main guy. Guess what? We do the same thing. We're just bigger. Yeah. Third wing is a pesky guy who likes to shoot outside shots but really likes to get to the foul line by trying to get to the basket. Guess what? Keldon Johnson does too, but he's big. You know, yeah. They have two guys inside who don't really do a lot of scoring, but they're big rebounders, big putback. Good. They like to get, they like to draw the double team and kick it out. Guess what? We do too. We're big. They like to bring in a pesky guard who doesn't do a lot of shooting but can shoot, and they like to bring in a couple big who uh, like average like one point and four rebounds a game. Then that sounds like quickly Montgomery 
and Richard. Like, but guess what? We're bigger everywhere. Like, if if you get somebody who's close to inches, like like example, they're big man, like six eight two fifty. Reed Travis is six eight two fifty, but Reed Travis is, is head head and shoulders better than this guy. Mm-hmm. So they're going to do to us what we do to them. The question is, if we bring our, is, are we going to bring our A game? Because if we bring our A game or we bring our our A minus game, we're just bigger and better and more talented and more physical. You know, this guy. Look, my thing is, this is where my concern comes from, is everybody bashed T-Row against Wolford. But people, how much basketball, if you bashed T-Row against that team, how much basketball have you played and how big are you? Because, I mean, if you're a big man, you may not get this. But if you've played, even if you've played tournaments at the Y, you know that typically you can't chase everybody around on defense and still have legs to shoot long distance shots exactly. on offense. Exactly. He wrote. He followed little buddy around McGee. He he swallowed. He he followed him everywhere. He went to the bathroom with him. He was yeah. in the lunch line with him. <laughs> he did it. They they did their taxes together. He got a Twitter like, password. <laughs> yeah, they did all this. They they got a they got a joint Facebook account. Like he was <laughs> there. Heroes probably going to do the same thing here. The reason it doesn't concern me is because the thing I was nervous about Wolford was my big fear was it was going to be like Seton Hall, that we were going to spend so much energy stopping McGee that everyone else was going to get hot, which they did. And then in the second half, McGee was going to get going, and then everybody else was going to have confidence. And then that's how you lose. Yeah. I don't really feel that with this shooting team. Yes, everybody can score, so don't hit me up and say, oh, he, you know, anybody, you know, he's shooting this means – no, if I truly believe if Hero gives us two points, but Hero locks this guy down and holds him to single digits, it could be nine. They don't really have any other scorer that's going to get them to sixty points. Yeah. If you told, like, if you told me, and I could be way wrong, we could lose, and the man could have two points, and we could get beat by twenty. Yeah, you never know. But just from what I've seen, from looking at everything, if you told me that, I won't tell you who wins. But I tell you, the third number one scorer gets four points. I bet you they don't score 50. Because that means you're relying on guys who no one else averages more than eight points a game. You're, you're, rely, you're relying on everyone else to get you 50 points, get you 60 points to keep up with us. And we're not even a high-scoring team. Right. Well, I, well, I will take that. Just on the other side of the coin, though, I believe Houston does average about 75. Five to seventy-six points per game, if if I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, if my notes are accurate here that I'm looking yeah. at. But when uh, good, one guy averages twenty-three, I mean, that's... right, uh, right. So so with that being said, like a lot, I'm saying like even though if we shut down their leading their leading score, I think there is I think there is potential of those other guys at at any point to to you know score fifteen sixteen points. And then, you know, yes, they're only averaging eight, but if you get 16 points, that's double the amount of points that, that well, you that, that's like, you gonna happen. Yeah. But is everybody going to do that? Like, you know, it, it's, it's going right. to take a village to fix this up. And I'm going to say the answer to that question he, is no, everybody's not going to double yeah. their average. Right. So if, if PJ tells me, here's what I would do. If I was, and I kind of being silly, but I'm kind of, I'm kind of being serious. Based on looking at these depth charts, based on looking at these rosters, looking at the size, the way they play, watching film, you know, not a whole lot. I haven't broken down, but just YouTube clips or, or Sports Center highlights. I would have, if I was Cal, I would have one of my assistants say, you're in charge of Stubby. And what I want you to do is whatever they do, you do it. So, for example, because we match up all the way aboard and we're almost like looking in a mirror, but we're a better version, when they put their – Big man in who puts up one point a game, but he grabs a couple rebounds. He's kind of clumsy, not a good shooter. Put Nick Richards in. Like, that's, that's when you get Nick Richards his time. And then when they go back to their big man who likes to, you know, I think I think the big man's average like seven points a game, seven rebounds, and six assists. Right. When that guy comes back in, where's TJ? Where's Reed? Like, that's when you do that because I just truly really think across the board, we are we are them but better. With that being said, I, I will always say this: I am very, I'm very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Superstitious. 
I, I do think that uh, it must be at least said out loud that yeah, we can lose. I mean, somebody can go. He could if the dude goes for forty, Kimba Walker style, we could we could be out of the night. Well, like like honestly, I think if we just let him do like we do him, you know, and say and say he does score 40, 40 points, but if we shut down everybody else, and they only score four or five points, we're I mean by by the scoreboard here, you know, you can score 40, 45 points, but if the rest of the team only scores ten, we're 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 still scoring yeah. sixty five plus points. Right, and that's that's the question I would have is a little buddy. I mean, because the dude's like six foot one, six foot two, something like that. If, if you're able to do that with Hero guarding you, are you still going to be able to guard Hero? Because Hero likes to run around and get over. Yeah, Hero's well, like he, well, like what he, like even then, let's say Hero is g- 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 guarding him and like he's getting wore out. We can throw in quickly in there, and it, you know yeah. whether you guys want to admit it or not. Quickly is very good off the off off the ball, getting open. Um, he, he, he is. While yeah. Hagens is at the point guard, quickly seems to find 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 himself open quite a bit. And if you watch him, he is very sneaky. Like he will, you know, he'll do a little J hook or like a little Z hook or or something, and he finds himself open a lot. So if that guy is guarding him, he's he's going to get wore out from just basically right. just running around the like, court. If Hero puts up four points tonight and shoots zero for eight, I would say, look at the film. Let's look at the film because no matter how how bad Hero shoots, you can never ask him Hagen. You can't just leave him out there because that's that's yeah. the last thing you should do. So he's going to follow you around and harass you on defense. So he's going to be tired. And then even on offense, he's running side to side. He's going wing to wing around. The, he does. If you watch Hero, that's what I encourage you to do. Early in the game, before he gets too hyped and and you, and you just stick your eyes to the basketball because you're just so nervous, watch Hero. He does the same thing. He'll run up the court. He'll go start at the left side or the right side. He'll run to the other side. He'll run at the top. He'll get the ball. He'll pass it. He'll run back to the other side of the court, get the ball, pass it, maybe try to kick it in, then run to the other side of the court. That's a lot of running especially if he's shutting you down on defense and you have to follow him around. Well, so, even though he is just running from side to side, there are still little screens happening or that, go, oh, or no, that, like, like that person, that person has to go around Reed Travis or try to work through Reed, try, try, you know, Reed, no, Reed Travis. I, I, I definitely, so, I agree. Yeah. I'm just saying from the point, like, Oh, he goes oh for eight. You're like, Oh, hero plays horrible. Dude, whoever's guarding hero is going to be exhausted. Do not because, look at the box score. Watch the game. Right. Do not when, when it comes to because Hero is one of those players that you just can't look at the box score. Now, obviously he can fill it up, but we got a lot of guys, and I think that's the type of guys that Cal like that enjoy doing things that aren't going to show up on a number. That aren't going to, you know, if if, I. E. if, if Hero, yeah, like like I mean, if you, like if you would go like super duper triple dipple like advanced pass, and you're like, oh. Um, and I'm just making stuff up here to kind of prove a point. But if you're like Reed or, or Tyler Hero made their star guy run 3.6 miles on defense when he averages 1.2 miles on defense, well, that's a number that says a lot to me yeah. because you got this guy running more than he's ever ran in a game just to – just on one side of the ball. And if that happens, so, you know he is not going to have the legs to go for, for like no, 40, 40 plus points. No. That, that, that's how you come up short on layups, my friend. That's yeah. how you airball three when, when you are just so gassed that you're shooting with your arms or you're attacking with your shoulders. That's how, that's how you get the – honestly, that's how you get the tangibles. That's how you get the things that do show up, the, the bad shooting percentages, the charges. The the missed rebound, like that's how you get those. So look, all this stuff. Cap Reed tra- or Tyler Hero go zero for eight, and the guy go for forty, and we lose. But I'm just saying, don't. Because here's what's going to happen: win or lose, as a fan base, we're going to start picking things apart, especially if we lose. And I'm just saying, if if we lose Friday, and I don't think we will, but if we do, don't be hard on this team. Look deeper before you start just throwing blind criticism. You know, if you're like, oh, Tyler Hero's horrible, he went 0 for 8. 
but he shut his guy down and held him to two points. And then it was some random watch the dude. Game. Was like, watch the game before yeah. you do anything like that. Like, yeah. I mean, some, mean like, let me, let, me re- let me rephrase that. Really watch the game. Mm-hmm. Do not watch the ball. Watch the like, watch that wing yeah. play over in the right side. What is he doing? Like, is he just standing there, or is he actually trying to work right. to get open? Like, really but, watch the game. Right, right, absolutely, Mike. Because that's the thing. What a great point that you brought up. Watch the game. Don't watch the score. Yeah. Because when you're in a tight game and you're stressed, you don't typically care what happens. All you care about is the shot going or not. Right. Like. We could play amazing defense, and they throw in a half court buzzer beater at the at the end of the shot clock, and our teams, oh, we're and fans are like, oh, we're so horrible at defense. No, you just watch the fact that the score went up by three. You didn't watch the possession. Yeah. Or we could have a great offensive possession like Seton Hall when we really looked good on offense. They just wasn't falling. You're like, oh, we're so horrible offensively. No, you watched the score. You didn't watch the game. Yeah. As a so like I, as I, a coach myself, like I like I catch myself like yeah, we like cool. Like, 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 we get like, yeah, we may have got a sack, but our cornerback let this guy mm-hmm. run a seam wide, oh, wide, wide open. open. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, come, like, come yeah, on yeah. now. Like, <laughs> like, I'll be on my guys bad about that. I'm like, hey, this guy's wide open. What are you doing? You know? And yeah. they're like, oh, we got and, a sack. And it's human, no, sorry. It's human nature to, to react off the action. And when really you shouldn't, because, dude, why are you high? Like, or when you see cornerbacks getting hyped because the receiver drops the ball, well, you were horrible out of position. <laughs> You just got lucky. I'm not going to coach to the action or the uh, – I'm, I'm not going to coach to the reaction or the result. I'm coaching to the action. Exactly. Because had he not dropped the ball, had he not did something that was out of your control, Six. the thing that was <laughs> in your control cost us. So, yeah, that, that's what I encourage. Just, just don't be hard on uh, Mike, let's play a little quick game here. We know who we're playing third Friday night. That is what that is. Let's play Would You Rather – a rest a re- uh, I'm sorry sorry everybody for the rest <laughs> of the way all right Let's so do it. we beat we know we got Houston yep we say we beat Houston would you rather play Auburn North Carolina Elite Eight so uh, like I said earlier in the show I do not want to play another SEC team just because okay. we know each other so well but on that other hand we did play North Carolina earlier this year and we beat the crap out of them uh, and they would definitely want revenge 100%. Yeah. Um, and North Carolina looks pretty darn good, I'm not going to lie. So give me a Yeah, and, and I, <laughs> I always – right, and, and it's a tough one because last week I was really hopeful. I was like, okay, you know, let's hope for uh, Washington to make a run. You know, let's hope for a 16 seed, you know. Right. But now that we're here, I'm, I'm nervous. Do you – because we talk about this a lot, Mike. Do you want to play a team that you obliterated, really, on a big stage? North Carolina, or do you want to play the team you beat twice? And and one time you really, because a it's tough to beat a team three times. Yep. But it's also even tough to beat a good team twice because typically what happens uh, take the human factor into this. I see a lot of people saying, "Oh, well, we beat them the first time, we can do it again." When Team A beats Team B, Team A tends to walk away saying, "Hey, that worked. That one thing worked. Let's do that forever." Mm-hmm. And your confidence well, is way says, up. Well, Team B lost, and they said, well, we lost because of that one thing. Let's work to stop it. So when you tend to go into that rematch, the thing you plan on doing is the thing they've worked so hard to stop. It just typically doesn't work out well in our favor, especially with young guys who, like you said, confidence of, hey, this worked, you know, these crazy shots was going in the first time. They're definitely going to do it this time. Makes me nervous. Yeah, that, that's Auburn, why I'm going to go with Auburn. Because we have the psychological advantages like above them, because we have beat them yeah, twice. Yeah, I, I think we have the psychological and the emotional. Because uh, North Carolina is a, a strong enough program with a good enough coach and a start and a senior enough team. Like Luke May and all those guys know, we're not here to win Elite Eight. We're not here to beat Kentucky. Right. We're here to win a national title. So Kentucky is just another work day. Auburn, Elite Eight. Kentucky, your rival, oh, we hate them. Bruce they're, Pearl, they're I don't happy know when the last time he's even been here. Yeah, but they're emotional. They're like, oh, these shots have to go in. And then when they get down by 10, down by 15, they start to crumble because they're like, no, everything we want is falling apart. Where North Carolina's like, hey, we've been here. Let's keep doing this. Right. Give me Auburn. I'd rather neither. And I didn't, I didn't like, 
that was the only thing I didn't like about the bracket was our three options was either going to be North Carolina team that we beat who's playing hot, an Auburn team we beat twice, conference foe, or a Kansas a Kansas team that we beat once, and they were going to be playing pretty much a home game. Mm-hmm. So I was really nervous about all those. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Would you rather Final Four, we get past all the other tests, Final Four, Tennessee, Virginia, or Purdue, I'm leaving Oregon out because that's the obvious one. I mean, if you could tell me we could play a 12 seed in the Final Four, I will sign up for that all day. I'm going to leave that one out. Do you want ten, you want Virginia, which is really hot and really dangerous, Tennessee, who is a rival, and they kind of got our number a little bit in the last couple of years, or a Purdue team that's big and I feel like we would overlook? Which would you rather play? You know, I think we match up best against Tennessee even though this would be their fourth time playing them this year. And, uh, I mean, and by laws of average or whatever you want to call it, we are due for that win. Um, yep. I definitely don't want to play Virginia. Um, I think that uh, we just don't play very well against zone. And, uh, you yeah, know, we do not. They are, team, especially if he's a perfect. Right. Yeah, and uh, they are very, very good at slowing the game down, keeping it 40 to 45 score, uh, making you really work your offense. And sometimes I think we just get complacent and we get tired of running our offense and we, and we force up a bad yeah. shot. Um, and Purdue, well, they're pretty good as yeah. well. So I, 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 I want to face – I mean, I'm going back on everything that I said earlier. I, I don't want to face the SEC team, but I would rather face <laughs> Tennessee. Yeah, that. given your odds, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm right there with you because – I mean, if we're talking fear. We're talking concern. We're talking rather if we had a perfect way. Purdue feels like a trap. I feel like no one would get hyped. Everybody would say, oh, well, Kentucky's in the Final Four. Cal's right. been in the Final Four. Give it to them. And they play like they're, they're long. Like their big man can give our big man props. So I'm a little nervous with that one. Virginia really hasn't given us anything to, to be excited about because Virginia looks like the team – that we're all hoping has a bad shooting. We'd be hoping had a bad shooting night like versus UMBC. Mm-hmm. But realistically, when they shoot, they shoot. So for so you go into halftime and you've only put up 20 points and they're shooting the lights out and they got 50, well, their defense is not going to allow much of a comeback. But I look at Tennessee. I see what you see. We're hyped. It is grudge match. It's two. And they got the two versus one. The games have really went every different way. We've dominated. They've dominated. We played tight with a big lead, and they came back to one. It, it's just, like you said, a law of averages. It's our turn again. Plus, the way Tennessee plays, you saw it versus Iowa, they'll let you back in. Because even though Schofield and Williams is, is great players and they're very smart, they'll get you some fouls. They'll let you back in it if you're smart enough to attack them. I, don't get me wrong, I'd love to play Oregon, but if, it, if not, uh, I'll take Tennessee on this one. And uh, championship game. Just yep. to kind of amend of what I said, I do hope Purdue wins because my bracket purposes. But I would rather play Tennessee. <laughs> right. Okay. I, I, I get. It. I get it. So I'm not going to throw out all the teams and break them down with the with the other side of the bracket because it can literally be uh, eight different teams. But let's go Duke, LSU, Michigan State. Gonzaga or Michigan? Or, uh, I'll leave Florida State and um, uh, the, the Texas Tech out because their styles fit like a lot of the other teams that we played about where they're long, deep. Right. That's everybody else, so you don't have to explain that. But let's just go – I'll throw Michigan State in there too. We'll, we'll, we'll go Duke, LSU, Gonzaga, Michigan. Who would you rather play? Well, I do not want to play Tom Izzo in the championship ship, ship game. Uh, he yeah, is. Like, he is a very proven coach. Uh, once he gets there, he just seems not not to lose. Uh, I don't know what it is. Is, is it the Tom Izzo effect? Is he paying the rest? I I I don't know. But I don't want to face Tom Izzo in the championship game. Period. Um, I would I would much rather not play the Duke as well. Uh, yes, as much as I want re- want re- want re- revenge against Duke, yada yada yada. I don't want to play them. They're a very very good team. They're a very very hot team. Zion, I think he's averaging what 30, 30 some points a game since he's been back. Something ridiculous, like just just like that. I don't want to play that either. Um, LSU, if they were to make it there, 
they will be a very very conf- confident bunch of b- bunch of kids and uh you know i i don't want to play a confident team either at, like as in most teams will be confident going into the championship ship game yes but lsu has a they will have that like like a like that extra oomph like hey we made it here minus our coach you know so like they'll have that little bit more oomph to really stick to Kentucky uh so I want to play a Michigan team um I haven't been very high on Michigan like all like like all year I like like I know they've been ranked you know pretty high like all like all season I played them I saw them play against Michigan State wasn't really that impressed um I I think they are they have some holes in their game that we can really exploit meaning like the wing play I think Keldon Johnson would go crazy against them you know for 30, 30 plus points uh so I would rather play Michigan out like out of all those guys <laughs> sorry about that yeah uh this is where we disagree uh LSU give me LSU we, we should have beat them the first time our guys are gonna feel we got hose Cal the car salesman gonna turn that into uh a motivation for our guys, and I think you know, you, there's a lot of great coaches who don't have a national championship or don't have any national or multiple national championships. Cal being one of them, but give, having a guy who is just started coaching the NCAA tournament, I would take those odds. Duke, even though yes, they can be beat, they should have lost to UCF. Man, I wish they would have lost to UCF. That was a great game. Get them in the championship game. You're going to get the best Zion. You're going to get the NBA RJ Barrett. That's yeah, it's very scary to me because those guys like to play on big stages. That's what they like to do. I don't want them there. Uh, Michigan State, and Michigan, both scare me because they're the type of like veteran guys who are long and right um, can, can get hot shooting. Don't scare me for a young team that is is uh, sporadic with their shooting abilities. That makes me nervous. Gonzaga, if Gonzaga gets there, they are scary because they have guards. They're, they're super deep. They have guards that can shoot the lights out. And they have a big man that has more blocks than missed shots. Just like I think in, more blocked shots than missed shots. He's like six foot nine and he's mm-hmm. certainly athletic. I don't want to face that. Like, I just feel like that's the type of team that – we might be better than, but every one of their players are more heady. They 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 would be more, you know. They're more seasoned. And, and, and it's one of those, yeah. So what it would be is, you would need every one of us to go. One thing that I think Gonzaga would do, even though yeah, great point. They're more seasoned. One thing I think Gonzaga would do that Kentucky wouldn't be able to do is. What Kentucky would have to do is Gonzaga would probably try to play you where everybody on the entire team scores eight points, right? Like, we're going to give it here, we're going to give it here, Mm -hmm. and then you have to hope that everybody on Kentucky's team is playing good defense. Because going into half that, like, I wouldn't be surprised if this is not going to be a scheme, especially against Duke and then likes of Kentucky and Tennessee, who are good teams with the talents up top. Mm Mm-hmm. If their goal isn't for all five, all eight of their nine, nine or ten of their players they play to have five points at halftime, because what that then does is everybody's confident, and you have to hope by that point you know which one's having the bad night. You know that it's quickly he's not been able to barter. You know it's Baker. You know it's Richard that's in foul trouble, and then you're like, all right, you're going to be the star of the second half, and that's very scary to me. Give me LSU. I just think that's when they start to fall off. I actually think the wheels are going to start coming off a little sooner. Yeah. If not Michigan State, I think Duke, even though I think they'd match up really well versus Duke, I just don't know if they'd be able to score. Because it's interesting because UCF gave you the way to beat them, which is pretty much just let them shoot from outside anytime they want. Yeah. Pack the inside. Sounds great. But you kind of, that sounds a little better when you have a guy that's seven foot six. True. Like, you know, t- Taco Falls made that sound a little better. LSU could do that. If, if but That's when it comes down to coaching because it becomes chess to checkers. You have to pack the paint. You have to say, I'm fine with Zion hitting three three-pointers in the first half because I don't think he can do it in the second half. And you got the link down low to contest Zion and their big. 
I just don't know if the head coach is going to be able to keep up with Coach K in the the, the back and forth that will be this chess match. Yeah, a little nervous. I think they would uh, they would start to panic a little bit. Like if like if like if Duke were to get into a like a, a ten point lead or or something like that, and like that's kind of what UCF did, did not do. Uh, I, I I believe at one point they were down by like eleven, maybe, yeah, they, they, maybe twelve. They and lost they, the Spurs. Yeah, like and like and you know, and they just kind of battled. They just kind of they're like, hey, Ironically, we are not going to let you guys beat us in the paint. As, as Kentucky fans, we like to also claim ourselves as Duke haters because most of us are. But and and it, that kind of gets echoed when the ESPN analysts start saying how you know they got away with some calls. There's also a lot of things that before I don't like getting to the refs because you play risky games, you get risky prizes. You know, you, you go to you go to Vegas and you start throwing down big money. You're you're left to leave with what Vegas gave. You. Right. You know, you tip the ball off and you you let the game go in the refs' hands. You get dealt. You get to deal whatever the dealer gives you. And that's what you got dealt because yes, they, they played great Mike, but the domino effect of the things that occurred, the missed alley-oop would have been huge. I mean, it was an alley-oop Mike. He hits that. It's a six point game with what? 40 seconds left. That's a whole nother monster because not only are you down two possessions, you're down two possessions. The biggest way you can be down two possessions. It's like being down 16 points in football. Not only do you need two touchdowns, you need two extra po- two two point conversions. Right. You don't need you you know you need a three a stop because there's no wiggle room because when you're down six, even if you hit that three, you have to hope you foul somebody who gives you zero points on free throw line, only to then have to hit another three. That's not things I trust Duke to do. No. You miss that dunk. You you miss the alley oop. It stays a four point game. They hit the three. Now it's just a one-point game. Now we're talking a whole different game. Pressure's on you, UCF. I think they go down, they go one or two from the line. It's a two-point game. My biggest problem is Zion's coming at the – they miss the three, they get it back. That happens. That's good basketball. That's a really good team getting back a good rebound. The problem is, is where, oh, the refs cheated them. This is where I say don't blame it on the ref because you're up – you're up, you know, I, I take that back. They were up three points at this point. Yep. You're up three points, and Zion Williams with 20 seconds to go decides to take a layup, and you foul him. Like, why? What, it, it was why a, do you not? Just, it was a ticky tack call. Like my wife was going crazy it, on that, but I mean, it is what it, it is. But you're you know. seven six. Everything's going to look like a foul because you look like somebody trying to run into a tree. You know, if I drive my bicycle into a tree, yes, I may have hurt the tree, but everyone watching is like, look at that idiot who just drove into a tree. (laughs) You let Zion come in and do the monstrous dunk you've ever seen because what you have is 14 seconds. They're still down one point. You get the ball with free throws. And then ironically, in the situation they were in, that putback that skimmed the rim and fell out, a seven foot six guy could have put that back. Right. I'm just saying. And uh, that's why. Just to uh, me, me, like I, I, like I don't want to talk about Duke forever, but th- th- that I know, end but that was a big. That's probably the best game of the tournament. That before. that that end to that game was a spitting image of the Wake Forest game earlier in the year. Spitting image, same exact, oh, yeah, absolutely, same exact, like miss, absolutely, miss shot. And absurd. Yeah, I, I certainly agree. Um, but like I said, don't want to talk about Duke. I, I just think that was, it's not so much us talking about Duke. It's just a great game. Us yeah. talking about the best game yeah. that we've seen. So the best game of the tournament so far. But I will, my closing thoughts on this, and I'll, I'll bounce it to you, Mike. I've said it all year under different ways, but now it's all coming to head. This is the most, the more I think about it, in my life, this is the most important title to win. And everybody's like, well, man, well, you probably say that every year. And yeah, there's probably some truth to that. But the more I think about it, this is it. More than 11, more than 14, more than 15, even more so than 16, given the cir- 17, given the circumstances. First off, this is Cal's 10th year. 
if he wins a title, that kind of solidifies everything. That means in 10 years, Cal had five Final Fours, two national titles. That's the best run anyone else had. Because the only other people that have two national titles are Duke and Villanova and UConn. And if you look at the rest of those years, if they weren't winning national titles, they weren't doing anything. Right. UConn hasn't even been to the title, been to the championship game, or been to the tournament unless they're winning national titles. So that solidifies Cal's run. That separates us. That gives us our ninth national title. We are in really good shot of UCLA. That puts us a little separation of North Carolina. We talked to Mike last time how that solidifies what Cal's doing with this young team, how he's going to take more Tyler Heroes and Keldon Johnson and go after less Marvin Bagley's and R.J. Barrett. And I'll say this every time, Mike. The reason this one's so important, and it, it, it doesn't have to end with us winning the title, but if it, it would just make it so much sweeter. If we won the title and Duke didn't make the Final Four, mm-hmm. that's bigger to me than us beating Duke in the Final Four. Because us beating Duke in the cha- or us beating Duke in the championship game, us beating Duke in the championship game basically just says you got revenge. It's very short sighted. It's very this the year. Yep. You know they beat you by thirty and you got revenge. Congratulations. The bigger story is. If we win the national title and Duke loses to LSU in the Elite Eight, that pretty much confirms what we've talked about, what I've said, and how I've always defended Cal in saying just because you have the best player in the country, just because you have five-star recruits, doesn't mean you're even guaranteed a Final Four. That 2010 team, there's been a lot of comparisons. That says it because if Coach K can't do it, if Coach Cal can't do it, if Coach Bill Self can't do it, if Roy Williams can't do it down in North Carolina, it kind of evens it out. You know what I'm saying? It's not just like, oh, Cal can't win with good talent. Or good talent. Nobody can win with young freshmen for one year. Like That's just kind of how it works. And then if Kentucky does it with what a lot of people would say is kind of a Duke-ish team, like this is kind of a Coach K-ish team, uh, a white guy that can shoot, a, a graduate senior, a couple of guys, a couple of sophomores, a couple of guys who really aren't your top 10 draft pick. And yeah, you can throw in Kelton Johnson as, as a big guy. That pretty much tells me that over the last decade, when it comes to coaching, that's basically that saying, that I don't remember who, what coach said it, but he's basically telling Coach K, I can beat your team and then I can take your team and beat you with your team. Like, because that's what he would do. So that would, Mike, that, this is so important to me that if, Oh, if, if Cal won the title this year and Coach Tate lost to Virginia Tech in the Sweet 16, that changes the landscape completely because everybody as a whole would say, oh, well, you can't win with freshmen. Because, look, you can hate Duke. You can hope, hate Coach K. But one thing you don't say is that Coach K can't coach. No. And he's got five national titles. Right. So if even he can't do it, you're not going to call him a choker. You're not going to call him that. So if he doesn't do it, with the likes of Zion, which I put up there with Anthony Davis, Carnsey Towns type level, especially at the college level, if he even he can't do it, it can't be done. Lay off Cal. Cal actually has been doing a lot with his talent. And then when he wins that, when he, if he wins that second national title, you got to put him up over the great. This has got to be one of the, second, the best 10-year runs outside of what UCLA did. You know, five yeah, final yeah. fours, three mm-hmm. national championship games, and two championships. That's elite level, Mike. And I think then, ironically, saying that, even though I would be very satisfied. Like, as a Kentucky fan, you're always disappointed when you don't win. But as life, you're like, oh, Cal won two titles here in 10 years. Like, well, that's great. Like, we can hang our hats on that. Ironically, we talked about this last show, Mike. I think that unraveled everything. Because now what it does is all the pressure of winning with freshmen or winning with elite talent is now taking off coaches, but it's Cal's back because nobody can do it, right? Like, right. it's just, you just don't do it. So now Cal gets that monkey off his back. He's he got that freedom. And he's got that second title. And everybody. now. So now if you're the next John Wall or if you're the next Willie Colley sign who needs a couple years to develop, you're like, Cal's good for me. Yeah, exactly. Now you're getting Tyler Heroes. You're getting <laughs> Keldon Johnson. You're getting John Walls. You're getting uh, you're getting a slew of everything because it's no longer about what Cal only has. To, Cal only likes to get the elite talent and roll the ball out. That's what everybody likes to think. So if you're sitting there and you're like, "Well, I'm not elite. He's not going to like me," that changes the game. You got guys like 
you know, Tyler Hero situation where their whole year they're like, hey, dude, you're not good. But when Cal comes calling, you're like, whoa, he sees something in me. I'm gone. And I think that would be huge for us, Mike. Yeah, I, I think that would be and, a, a dynasty in the making there. Like, we would yeah. be – it would, it wouldn't, it would no longer be a shoot your load and then a, you know a rebuild mode. Like it's, it'd be yeah. all, it would, well, like it would always be the next guy up. Like, well, and we'd and, always be loaded. Uh, let's let's talk about this, Mike. And and this is probably where it gets unpopular, but I think it sells a message because we know who Cal is. We know what Cal style is. What if Cal wins the title this year? Duke doesn't make it out of the Sweet 16, or maybe doesn't make it to the Final Four. Cal wins the title, and then send five guys pro. I don't know, fam. I don't want that. But what if they send Hagen, Johnson, PJ Washington, Tyler Hero, and let's just say even EJ Montgomery slithers in there. I don't know. Maybe Nick Richards is dead or somebody. I mean, they're just the four. What the, because historically, when Coach K has gotten – the guys that you would consider Tyler Hero, Emmanuel Quickly, he doesn't really give them the props to go pro. You get the feeling that he's like, "You're here to be the, for, you're here to be the background dancers. You're here for the star." Well, Coach K, Coach Cal just said, "Tyler Hero, you are the star," and that starts just. That's how you get. Everybody's like, "Oh, how did we miss out on John Morant?" Well, that's how you get John Morant because. Well, first off, like John Morant wasn't very good as coming out of high school by the eye. You know, he'd have come here, he might have sat on the bench and never played anything. Right. But that's how you get that to happen. Because you know, a lot of guys see these seniors that are like the greatest college basketball players, and you're like, well, how did how did Cal miss out? How, well, how did Kentucky miss out on that? Well, there was no reason for him to come sit on the bench for three years. Yeah, and it, you know what I'm saying. But a hand this player worked his butt off to to get. That. No, yeah, absolutely. Let's not take away that aspect. And and maybe you lose that edge if, if Kentucky recruits you. If you're working your butt off, freshman, sophomore, junior year in high school, and nobody's calling you, but you're going into your senior year, Cal gives you a scholarship, you might lose that edge. But I, 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 like I said, I could ramble about that because this is just so important, Mike. Uh, if we don't win, I'm sure I'm going to love the team. I'm sure I'm going to love Cal, greatness. But I think if we come up short and if Duke wins it, I think Cal has to change his approach a little bit. I, I, I don't want to lose Cal. I want Cal to stay here. But I think Cal may have to take just a different approach. Cal might have to start selling some different tickets. You know, Cal might have to start talking a little differently. And he may never do that. But if if I start seeing Coach K take the number one player in the country and winning a couple of titles and get the Final Fours, I get a little concerned because Coach K's a great coach. But I don't want to have to be forced to admit that Coach Cal isn't a great coach. Well, but let's on the same level. But let's also think about this. On the other hand, I believe it's next year where high school kids can go straight into the NBA like again. So, well, that, that's not even guaranteed. That that's just up in the air. Well, and, like I like I, I like mean, I thought it was pretty much set in stone. Like it like it's going to happen. It's just a matter of waiting for the next uh, players well, association no, because, meeting or something. Well, not to turn this into a boring NBA show, like we'll talk about the boring side of the NBA. Well, no, the reason that's not going to be done is because when basically you have like a lawsuit all the time, all these negotiations are just a big lawsuit. They don't want to give anything up. So before side A tells side B, we will allow high school kids, the other side's going to want some. Even though they both may mutually agree on it. It's kind of like pet. It's kind of like who can be out petty who. That's why, like, if you notice in the NFL, especially, you'll start seeing every time that the NFL, that the NFL players get to dance during after a touchdown, they lose a percentage of their money. Like, you know, it's just because we're not going to give you something, no matter how trivial it is, without something in return. So that's what I think is going to cause the hookup. Is that because essentially the reason that is is the owners don't want to be held accountable. The owners don't want to be held accountable for drafting horrible kids out of high school. So. When that starts happening, look, it may, and I hope it does, but I just think there's, I think right before the clock strike midnight, right before that pen meets paper, somebody's going to be like, well, I'll sign this, but we think we want two more percent of the revenue, or we want to legalize this, or we want bigger contracts. And then they're going to be like, well, no, I'm not doing that. And then I think this deal gets pushed back three more years. So I, I'm, I'm hesitant to get too hyped. I, I personally, and, and like I said, I'll be quick with this, Mike. I personally think the best place is 
you say that the NBA draft limit is 21, and that anybody in the world, 21 or older, can enter the NBA draft, don't mean you're going to get drafted. And then the NBA will give its owners 30 spots. And of that 30 spots, you know, 30 spots to draft someone under 21. And and then you got 20 of those spots for anyone under the age of 20. And then you got uh, 10 of those spots for anybody under the age of 19. And that way, you know, you're guaranteed – you're well, not guaranteed because you're never guaranteed anything, but that way you're more encouraged to say – instead of just saying, oh, I would draft all these kids out of high school, you only got to pick 10. And I think that way – you're, you're kind of protecting the kid too because like hey dude if you didn't get the invite if you don't think if you're not one of the 30 best players under the age of 21 the odds of you getting drafted in the top 60 is very rare True. that's what i think but mike any closing thoughts for us man no man like uh the only thing i'm kind of upset is, is such a late start on friday night but man i'm gonna have a bud light in my hand and join the great sweet 16 matchup that we have here and we're going to get yeah it to the it it does stink because you know you're at kind of uh you're at kind of the mercy of the game before you if the game before you go triple overtime you're stuck with it. Oh, it's gonna be like a ten thirty um, start time, hundred percent. Yeah, uh, I, I just hope it's ten thirty. I just don't want it to be at twelve o'clock. <laughs> you know, I don't want it to be like triple overtime and then it's twelve o'clock. Right. right. Um. So yeah, that's the that's the obviously the big thing, and I hate to wait all darn day just to be the last game. But it'll be here before you know it. Take a nap, man. Before you know it. Take, but, take a um, nap. Hopefully, Duke gets beat by Virginia Tech. Hopefully. Oh, that'd be so that'd be so great. Hopefully, right, we whoop that butt. You know, it's funny. We won't get to see it because Duke plays at the same time we do. Right. So, um, which is fine. I mean, it, it, I, I like it because the business are like, oh, well, I bet Duke got the primetime game. Well, no, though, Duke got exactly the time we got. So, big game. Love our cats. Go Kentucky. Uh, rumor in North Carolina is one of their big freshmen, Naz- Nazir Little, Nazir Little, fighting a kind of a bug, kind of fighting some kind of illness. Might be out against Auburn. That could be something to watch. We'll see. But if Mike, if there's nothing else, that will be it for Big Blue Breakdown. Okay. And we out.